Welcome to this video on cable size selection and the on-site guide from Learn Electrics. This video and the page numbers that are used are specific to the Brown Amendment 2 on-site guide with just one exception from the Brown Wiring Regulations book. I should point out that although Amendment 3 is now released and we have a video on this, Amendment 3 is a 10 page add-on pack that is attached to Amendment 2. So the Amendment 2 books are still valid. As just mentioned, we are using the Brown Amendment 2 books and the questions we will answer will include How do I use the information in the books to help me? Why should I choose the correct size cable and circuit breaker? And what are the formulas that will assist me. Let's start with the cable size formula. There is a set method to help you to select the correct size cable for a particular circuit and you are encouraged to use it. This is an important formula or equation and we must follow this in the correct order so that we get the right result. The formula comes from the 18th edition Amendment 2 wiring regulations book, the Big Brown Book. The formula is talked about in words as follows. Look at page 424 of the Big Brown Amendment 2 book and this is Appendix 4, Section 4 and look at the third paragraph. Shown here is part of this page, page 424 from the Brown Regs book. This information is not found in the on-site guide. Look at the blue highlighted area. Here it mentions IB, IN and IZ and their relationship to each other. It tells us that IB must be equal to or less than IN and that IN must be equal to or less than IZ. So what do these symbols mean? IB is the design current, the load. Think of IB as B for build. What current has the manufacturer built the appliances to take? What is going to be plugged into the circuit? What has the circuit been designed for? IN is the nominal current rating of the breaker or fuse. Think of N as the number or name printed on the breaker. For example, 16 amps or 32 amps, the nominal current. IZ is the cable rating. What is the maximum current that a conductor can carry under certain conditions without overheating or exceeding the voltage drop requirements? We can take a moment to look at the funny symbol shown in the formula. It's very important that you understand this symbol and that you get it the correct way round. Get it wrong and you will be in all sorts of trouble. We can have a less than symbol. Any number on the left side must be less than the number on the right. Then we can have an equals symbol. The numbers on both sides must be exactly equal. Now we can combine them as shown so that we can say that the number on the left is less than or equal to the number on the right. And here is an example. Using the less than symbol, 2 is definitely less than 3. And the equals symbol, 2, is exactly equal to 2. Combine the two and we can say that 2 is less than or equal to 3. Remember this, it matters. The design current must be less than or equal to the fuse or breaker size. And the fuse size or breaker size must be less than or equal to the cable current carrying capacity for the circuit. Why does this matter? The design current cannot be greater than the fuse or breaker size. For example, we cannot have a 13 amp kettle on a 5 amp fuse. Every time it's switched on, 
the fuse will blow. And the cable rating must always be the strongest part of the circuit and chosen for its current carrying capacity for that particular circuit's installation conditions. It is chosen so that it does not exceed the limiting temperature before the protective device operates and to not exceed the voltage drop limit. It is easier to change a fuse than it is to rewire a whole circuit. There is a specific order of calculation that must be followed. First is IB. We always calculate the load first. Then IN, so that we choose the correct breaker or fuse size. And finally IZ, we can determine the correct cable size for the circuit. Very often we will know the watts or kilowatts for the load or appliance, but we need the information in amps. For this, we can use the power law triangle as shown here. If we know the power P in watts and we know the voltage V of the circuit, then we can easily calculate the amps. P divided by V gives I. Or some people will say watts divided by volts will tell us the amps. Let's do an example calculation. We are asked. A 3000 watt kettle is attached to a 240 volt supply. What is IB, the current, in amps? Use the formula shown and put in the numbers given in the question. 3000 watts divided by 240 volts is 12.5 amps. That is our answer. IB, the design current, is 12.5 amps. Another example, this time a 4.6 kilowatt space heater is fed from a 230 volt supply. What is the design current IB in amps? The first thing we must do is to convert kilowatts into watts. To do this, multiply the kilowatts by 1000 so that 4.6 kilowatts is the same as 4,600 watts. Now we can put the numbers into the formula. 4,600 watts divided by 230 volts is 20 amps. And this is our answer. IB, the design current, is 20 amps. And we will use this 4.6 kilowatt heater for the rest of the video. We know IB, 20 amps, so now we can select the most appropriate breaker size and this can be any overcurrent protective device, a circuit breaker, a fuse or an RCBO. Before we move on, check page 74 of your on-site guide. Some books will show a typo where the on-site guide uses BS60898 and BS61009. Please read this as BSEN 60898 and BSEN 61009. Nobody is infallible. OK, back to the nitty gritty. Table 7.11 shows the popular sizes for overload protective devices and the assumed loads per circuit. This is useful because good practice says that generally we should not select breakers and fuses where the constant load is close to the actual breaker rating. We have a constant 20 amp load here and we may be tempted to select a 20 amp breaker. This would not be right. We should choose the next size up, a 25 amp breaker. And you can see in the rightmost column that a 25 amp breaker is correct for a 20 amp load. So, as shown on page 74, for our 4.6 kilowatt heater, we will choose a BS EN 60898 25 amp type B breaker. Let's see where that takes us. Now that we've selected a breaker, we can move on to cable size selection. Table 7.13 in the on-site guide covers several pages. 
Take some time to study the layout and order of these pages. We want page 81. We will make some assumptions and assume that the installation method 100 applies. And the table shows us that for a 25 amp type B breaker, we should choose 4 mm by 1.5 mm twin and earth cable as shown in the red box. The table also tells us that if this was a TNCS system, then we could have a cable run of up to 55 metres subject to voltage drop limits, and we should check this next. It's important that we check the voltage drop before installing the cable. We need to be certain that sufficient voltage will be present at the load, the heater in this case, to allow the heater to function correctly. Any voltage drop is lost in the cable and the customer is paying for lost energy and not heating the house most efficiently. Voltage drop is measured in millivolts per amp per meter and we will convert this back to volts in the calculation. Page 176 shows a variety of voltage drops and we are interested in single phase AC voltages with the values shown in the pink table. Page 168 of the on-site guide shows the formula that we should use in order to calculate the actual voltage drop in the cable. Note that we only measure the length in one direction, from the consumer unit to the load, and not there and back. The actual voltage drop, or VD, is equal to the millivolts per amp per meter multiplied by the load IB, multiplied by the length in meters. This is all divided by 1000 to convert the answer into volts. So, start with the basic formula and put in the numbers that we have. 11 from the pink table, 20 amps from our earlier calculation, and 55 meters as suggested by the on-site guide. Dividing this by 1000, we have a voltage drop of 12.1 volts. When we check the result, we find that the voltage drop limit will be exceeded for this circuit if we use the full 55 meters. Too much voltage is lost in the cables. The maximum permitted voltage drop for a non-lighting circuit is 11.5 volts. We have two choices in order to find a solution. We can do one of two things. Either install a bigger cable size as this will reduce the voltage drop, say from 4mm cable to 6mm. A bigger cable size will reduce the MVAM number. Or we could find a shorter route for the cable. But how much shorter? Can we calculate the new maximum length? If we reduce the length, we reduce the voltage drop. Either or both of these actions will reduce the voltage drop. We need to get below that magical 11.5 volts limit. What happens if we choose a bigger cable size, ignoring the fact that it costs more money? If we choose 6 by 2.5 twin and earth, the table tells us the 6 mm cable has an MVAM number of 7.3. If we put this number into the calculation, we have a voltage drop of just 8.03 volts, perfectly acceptable. The maximum permitted voltage drop is 11.5 volts, and the actual voltage drop is just over 8 volts. In this example, 6 mm twin and earth cable will be adequate. Or we could keep the 4mm cable and try to find a shorter route that is still acceptable. To do this, we need to rearrange the voltage drop formula to make the maximum length the subject. We've done this for you as shown in the blue box. The maximum length is found by multiplying the maximum permitted voltage drop by 1000 and then dividing this by the millivolts per amp per meter and the design current IB. Putting the numbers into the calculation, as shown, we have an answer 
and 52 metres. So, the new length is 52 metres compared to the previous 55 metres. If we don't need 55 metres, then don't use it. If we can save 3 metres by rerouting the cable, we can still install 4mm by 1.5mm twin and earth. And here we show all three formulas that we've used in the video. And it would be well worth writing these down somewhere that is easy to access. You will need them, not just in exams, but on site too. Practice really is the key to being successful in exams and in being professional when on site. Make up some examples of your own and work through to find an answer. For example, a 3 kilowatt immersion heater on a 230 volt feed or a 240 volt lighting circuit with 6 100 watt BC lamps. Thank you for watching. It really is appreciated. And I hope that you found this video useful and informative. Please subscribe to our channel to get access to all of our videos and remember to click on notify to be sure of not missing our next video. And you will find even more information, videos and help on our website at learnelectrics.com. And don't forget, you can also type in Learn Electrics, all one word, into the YouTube search bar to go directly to our channel at any time from any computer. We are constantly adding new videos to our channel, so don't miss the next one. And once again, thank you for watching, and we hope to see you again very soon.